look at this question. The diodes in the circuit shown below are ideal. If V1 is equal to 2 volts and V2 is equal to 0 volts, find ID1, ID2 and V output. How to do this? See, as I told earlier, if you do not have <coughs> these 2 kilo ohm resistors, then if it is 2 volts, it is 0 volts, we can comfortably say that only D2 is on and D1 is off and accordingly we can take care of the remaining things. But here some resistors are connected. Directly we do not know the cathode voltages. Okay. Then how do we solve this problem? For that, If you observe D1, its anode is going towards 10 volts, cathode is going towards 2 volts, D1 is on and D2, its anode is also going towards 10 volts and cathode is going towards 0 volts. So D2 is also on. It looks like assume D1 and D2 are on. So they act as short circuit. And the corresponding equivalent circuit appears in this fashion. Two volts, two ohms. Zero volts, two ohms. Eight ohms, ten volts. And V output. It's not VC, V output. Then let us find V output. And uh, right, so let me assume this as node X, KCL at node X. It is V output minus 10 by 8 plus V output minus 2 by 2 plus V output minus 0 by 2. is equal to 0. Then V output by 2 plus V output by 2, it is V output, V output plus V output by 8, 9 V output by 8 is equal to 10 by 8 plus 1. We can write. So V output is equal to 2 volts. Straight away we can take it. If V output is 2 volts, what will be the current's uh, ID1 and ID2? This is ID1 and it is ID2. So ID1 is equal to here V output minus 2 by 2. It is 2 minus 2 by 2. It is 0 milli amperes. Implies what you can say. Current through the diode is 0 means implies D1 is off. If we get negative or zero, zero also D1 is off. If it is positive, then only we can say diode D1 is conductive. Okay. Next. What about ID2? Okay, it looks like I will cross verify it. Nothing to worry. And for ID2, what we can write? It is V output minus 0 by 2. It is 2 minus 0 by 2. It is 1 ampere. Okay, 0 amperes or 0 milliampere doesn't matter. Anyway, ID2 is equal to 1. Okay. So, we started with an assumption of ID1 and ID2 are on. But at the end, what we can observe is ID1 is 0 means D1 is off and D2 is on. If so, instead of doing all these things, what I am doing is, let us take the same circuit with D1 off. Check whether you are getting, uh, what answers we are getting. So, D1 is off, D2 is on, 10 volts, 8 ohms, 2 ohms, 0 volts, 2 volts. This is V output and this entire current, it is ID2. Okay. It is 0 volts means it is like connected to ground only. So what is our ID2 then? It is 10 by 8 plus 2, it is 1 ampere. Absolutely, we have got. 
anyway id1 is 0 okay d1 is off and id1 is 0 and what about v output v output is equal to voltage at this point with respect to 0 volts ground volts id2 into 2 ohms it is 2 volts id1 is 0 anyway if i take this particular circuit If I take this particular circuit, what I am getting ID1 0, ID1 0 and ID2 1 ampere and V output is 2 volts. Okay. So, if ID1 is 0, here also the same thing, no? Here ID1 is 0 and ID2 is 1 ampere, V output is 2 volts. Okay. That is it. So, right, why I have taken this problem means, see, every time ID, uh, current through a particular diode need not be negative. If it is zero also, it is fine. We can conclude that that particular diode is off. This is the idea. Okay. This is how we can do this problem. See the next question. The diodes in the circuit shown below have parameters V gamma is equal to 0 0.6 volts and RF forward resistance is 0. The current ID2 is. They are asking us to find ID2. Okay. So, <clears throat> what is the equivalent circuit? When the diode is on, it is represented by means of an ideal voltage source V gamma. It is 0.6 volts can be shown across the diode. Okay. If you look at D2 first, its anode is going towards 10 volts, the cathode is going towards 0 volts, it looks like D2 is on, okay. And coming to D1, its anode is going towards 10 and the cathode is going towards 5, so it looks like D1 is also conducting, okay. What about D3? D3, if you observe so, its anode is at 5, its cathode, if you see in this direction, it is going towards 5, if you see in this direction, it is going towards 10 or if you observe this way, it is going towards 0. So, we do not know what happens to the diode D3. Okay. But there is a scope for D3 also to conduct. Okay. But one thing, for D1 to conduct, the voltage at this point or V output should be greater than 5.6 volts. Then only D1 will be on. If the voltage at this point is greater than 5.6, D3 does not conduct. Okay. Or if D3 conducts, if D3 conducts, the voltage at this point will be, voltage across D3 will be 0.6 volts, so that the voltage here will be 4.4, 5 minus 0 0.6. If it is 4.4 volts, D1 cannot conduct. But D2, no issues at all. So here there is an issue that if D1 conducts, D3 cannot conduct. If D3 conducts, D1 cannot conduct. Only one can conduct at a time. This is one observation. So, what shall we do? It looks like, right, uh, its anode is at 5 and cathode is going towards some higher potential. So, let me take a chance that D3 is off and D1, D2 are on. It is an assumption. Right. After that, we calculate the currents. If current through a particular diode is negative or zero, we can conclude that that particular diode is off and the remaining will be on. Okay. So, what I am doing here? Assume D1 and D2 are on and D3 is off. If so, what is the equivalent circuit? What 
point six volts, point five k zero volts. Point six volts, five volts, main point five k ten volts. We are put. D3 is of it simply acts as open circuit. So I am not showing that part. Then with this, let us find what will be our output voltage. V output. Let me take this as node X. KCL at node X. Then V output minus 10 by 9.5. Plus V output minus. 0 0.6 minus 0 by 0 0.5 kilo ohm plus V output minus 0 0.6 minus 5 by again it is also 0 0.5 k is equal to 0. Okay. Then what we can write anyway kilo kilo cancel here i can cancel 0 0.5 0 0.5 if i multiply the entire equation with 0 0.5 here it becomes 90 okay so v output plus v output t out to v output plus v output by 19 so 38 plus 139 V output by 19. We can take it. That is equal to 10 by 19 plus 0.6 plus 0.6, 1.2, 1 1.2 plus 5, that is 6.2. Okay, so what do we get for V output? If you do further calculations, V output is found to be 3.27 volt. I am directly writing it or implies V output is equal to 3.27. So 10 plus 6.2 into 19 by 39. If you take it so, 3.27 volts we can see we output okay then if it is so if we output is 3.27 then what about id2 id2 is positive only and what about id1 it is 3.27 right is the anode voltage of d1 and cathode is going towards 5 so there is no scope for d1 to contact at the same time, what about D3? Here, this voltage is less than 5 volts, so there is a scope for D3 to contact. Okay, so implies ID1, if I take it so, it is equal to V output minus 0.6 minus 5 by 0 0.5k. Okay. V output is 3.27 minus 5.6 by 0.5k which is negative, not possible. Implies D1 is off. Means ID1 is 0. So then they are asking us to find ID2. We can't take ID2 from these values. So I can't write ID2 is equal to uh, 3.27 minus 0 0.6 minus 0 by 0.5k. Absolutely wrong. If D1 is on, this is the scenario. As D1 is off, the equivalent circuit is changing. Okay. So now I take the new circuit. What is our new circuit? Zero volts, nine point five k, 
0.5k, 0.6 volts and D3 is on, 5 volt, 0.6 volts and this is our output, 10 volts. Okay, we can draw the circuit in this fashion. Then this current is ID2. What is ID2? Anyway, what is V output? V output is minus 0.6 plus 5. So it is 4.4 volt straight away. Then ID2, it is equal to V output minus 0 0.6 minus 0 by 0.5 kilo. It is 4.4 minus 0 0.6 into 2. 0.5 means anyway 1 by 2 milliampere. So, how much do we get? It comes approximately V output is 4.4. So, it is coming around 7.6 milliampere. I did. Okay. That's it. If we are interested, we can calculate ID3 also. How to find ID3? This current will be ID3. Anyway, they asked us to find ID2. ID2 is found to be 7.6 milliampere. Option C is correct. Here, our problem is done. Out of curiosity, if you want to find ID3, we can calculate. So, this current, if you take, uh, this let me take this current as i i is equal to 10 minus 4.4 by 9.5 k and it this current is found to be uh, 0 0.58 milliampere or approximately 0 0.6 milliampere then id3 is equal to right id i minus id2 it is equal to 7 milliampere, approximately ampere. This is how we can do this problem. You see the interesting thing here. Anything is possible, right? It looks like D1 and D2 are on and D3 is off. But the thing is D3 is on and D1 is off. Anyway, D2 is added. Okay. This is how we can do this problem. It is also very interesting question.